Today we're going to talk about when white is not white, and we'll also talk about why black is not black. So let's get started. So the concept is what is white in direct sunlight has to be lighter than white in shadow. I'll say that again. What is white in direct sunlight has to be lighter than white in shadow. And that's what's happening here. You can see how white that triangle of the drawers is where it's in direct sunlight. It's the exact same local color. Local color is the color something is in real life. Those drawers are all painted the same color. But where the sun hits it, you can see that it's whiter or lighter as compared to the white that is in shadow. So I'll say it again. White that is in direct sunlight has to be lighter than white in shadow. It's just something that occurs in our world. Here are white objects, the white tub, the white shower curtain, the white towels, and you saw those drawers on the far right. So everything here is white, but nothing can be as white as you see that bright little sliver of white happening in the upper right hand corner. Here's another really cool moment. You see where the white hits the white molding, it's very white, and where the white is not in direct sunlight, it's not as bright. And look what happens with the black. The black in shadow reads as black, but the black in not in shadow, in direct sunlight, is lighter. But compare that to the white, it's not as white. So I don't want that to be confused with anything that's in direct sunlight is going to be white. That is not true. We're talking about white in direct sunlight and white not in direct sunlight, and later as well, black in direct sunlight and black not in direct sunlight, and how you have to compensate for the fact that that's just the way the world works. And it's fun to look at these light patterns because you'll learn so much when you do it, especially if you just look at white objects. Here, there are quite a few white objects that are in direct sunlight, and then there's some others that are not in direct sunlight. And so if you were gonna paint this, you would have to figure out colors or values for all these different types of white and have them still read as white, but be correct in terms of how light or dark they are. It's always fun to see play. There's uh, that weird sort of sun reflection that's happening in the window. I mean, if you walk around your house, you're gonna see this kind of stuff all the time. Patterns and things that happen, and I'm just interested in the shapes that happen. I think that's just fascinating. Sometimes a painting can just be about shapes, not about the thing itself. Um, Look at how dark the white wall is in the shadow compared to where the sun is hitting the white of the uh, window pane. It, that's a pretty dramatic difference there. And that can happen in really direct sunlight. I'm sorry, there's a dog barking. Oh, there's the dog. Um, this was just a moment where just looking in the hallway, you think there's nothing to paint. And there really wasn't before Callie appeared, but just the light itself in the hallway was fun to watch. Now we'll look at outdoors, that whole tree shape that is on the shed there. It's, that's, that would be what the pole painting is about, not about the shed. Here's another really fascinating shadow. This always happens at our, our house at a certain time of day. I find that shadow way more interesting than the house itself. So sometimes just looking at shapes will inspire you. Here's an example of where black is not black because the direct sun is hitting that black wall. And look at how bright that black is. Even though we know it's black, our brain knows it's a black wall, but when the sun hits it, it's not. Now, if I was going to paint this, I'd have to figure out what that white picture was. How white is that white picture compared to the white that came through and hit the direct sunlight of the wall? And that's just a lot of practice. Now, here's the painting that I did yesterday, and it looks like there's a lot of white in it because of, well, obviously because of snow, but when you really look at the snow, you see how blue it is. But around the windows, that struck me as being the whitest thing of all. And I had to calibrate for that because there really was no white in the picture at all. There was no direct sun hitting those window panes. You know, I didn't know it until I went to paint it, but it was true. And so I had to compensate for that. And so here's an example, or, or, you know, an artistic ren rendering of that. Here's a white peony. What's white is left white. When I say leave the whites of your paper white, that's what I did in this case. And of course, it's a white peony, so I had to figure out all the different shapes and what value were they. But indeed, the object itself is white. It's only where the direct sunlight hits it that it was the whitest. 
If you leave the white of the paper white in a scene like this, it will give you that kind of snap and crackle and shine because it's so white compared to everything else that's happening here. I know some people use the paper and will gouge it out in order to get that effect. I think I used uh, that masking fluid, which I don't really use anymore. Here's a white cat. There's an awful lot of purple happening in that white cat. I'm not even sure there was any white left in the paper but it reads as white, but it was not a cat in direct sunlight. Here's a house that was in direct sunlight, and you can see how bright the white is on the side of the house that the sun hits, and how much darker the white is on the front of the house. And here's another example of what would have been white or and gray barn. Really nothing happening here, but what was interesting was the shapes that the sun made when they hit it. So it's really fun to look around and see all the different shapes and decide what colors they are. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.